Good evening, welcome to the program. Plenty to talk about. Australia and Western civilization really has an amazing story. So let's talk about that tonight because there are plenty of those who want to run around and deny it. Now, the pioneers of this country, were, I think they had a better vision, stronger values and greater freedoms 200 years ago than we seem to have today. And I'll tell you why. The, you know, the colonial era, the pioneers from those days took real risk. They shaped our country into how we know it now. But really, what, right now, we just seem so risk-averse. And if the rules of today actually applied back then when Australia's European British colonies were established, well, frankly, we'd have had a committee of inquiry into James Roos's farm proposal at Parramatta and nothing to feed the fledgling colony. Uh, we'd never have seen Blacksland, Wentworth or Lawson cross over the now heritage-listed Blue Mountains, and of course the Kalgoorlie water pipeline would never have left the drawing board, nor would have Snowy Hydro 1.0 ever been built after the Second World War. Now look, of course some mistakes have been made over the past 200 plus years, and some appalling things were done to some of the first Australians, but the Australian story is one of being bold, not being told. Yet today, arguably, we have fewer freedoms than generations ago. So many rules, regulations, processes, forms, fees. We're being told. We're not allowed to be bold. Things aren't getting done. For instance, I often talk about it, the Federal Environmental Protection Biodiversity Conservation Act, the EPBC. It's now being used to prevent all sorts of basic progress. Some of the state governments are using it to delay dam projects, quarrying, you know, smashing rocks so you can make concrete out of it, port, road, rail projects, all the things Australia desperately needs to build its economy. One observation given to me this week from somebody from northern Australia is it's almost got to the stage now where you can't even mow your own lawn without filling in an application form under this EPBC. So while our comparatively uneducated pioneers struggled to win the land against the floods, the droughts and the bushfires, we're now in constant power struggle, a constant power struggle against a system created by apparently highly educated. Now, like I studied years ago when I went to uni, Griffith University for the record, sociologist Stephen Lukes talks of three dimensions of power. There's the overt, that's direct and open. You can't do that, you know about it. The covert, the secretive stuff, the stuff you find out about when you do something wrong. And of course then, there's the behavioural, where ideological power or the power to shape desires is being affected. Think the way the woke world is trying to tell you that you can't do that, that you're shunned. We're fast falling victim to this power being wielded by despots. And there's not even in an overt or covert way, but in this ideological way, changing, manipulating our behaviour and our social norms. There's a perversion of our unifying core beliefs. Religious attendance, well, look, it's all but lost. Values are under challenge. Some lives apparently matter more than others. And the increasingly shrill response from the supposedly intelligent leaders of our time regarding this latest pandemic, this health crisis, well, it's frankly askew. The jab rollout is seen as a kind of new religion. It's heresy to not believe in it. Surely we should just let everyone who actually wants to get the jab get it, make it available. But it's evident it's also now becoming a device to restrict our freedoms. It's a device to discriminate and even incriminate, Point putting the jab haves pitted against the have-nots, where and when you can travel, where and when you can interact with other, others. If you're a pregnant woman and you can't have the jab, can you get on a plane? No, that's the sort of rubbish they're talking about. Now, three years ago, the Australian government couldn't get most of us to sign up to the My Health record. We railed against it on this program. I think 70% of Australians didn't sign up. But this pandemic has created an opportunity for them to know all about our clinical details anyway. So, look, the questions continue. They're really simple questions. I just want answers to them. Where is Australia going to be socially and economically in a generation, 25 years from now. And when will some of these new onerous rules and controls imposed by government, this mission creep, actually be wound back? The pioneers wouldn't have put up with the rubbish we now have to deal with. The millions who fought wars against tyranny 
over the past century or so wouldn't have put up with it. So why the heck do we have to put up with it? Keen to know what you think. Hashtag Hardgrave if you want to tweet or you can write directly to me, Gary. Dot hardgrave at skynews.com.au.